So welcome everybody. We're going to get started. Um, we know we're expecting a lot more people, um, but they will be joining uh, along. So we have a great group of speakers today, but I wanted to start off with um, sort of giving you an update on what happened yesterday. So what happened yesterday was um, that there was a Senate budget hearing um, with the uh, State Senate Budget Subcommittee that funds the uh, Department of Developmental Services. And that subcommittee had a panel on the self-determination program. And it was a panel as an overly broad term. Usually they would have a, a few people talking about it, but um, because of COVID, it, everything was, you know, done virtually. So it was just Erin Carruthers from the State Council who was speaking at it. Um, along with somebody from the Department of Developmental Services. And um, at the meeting there was, um, and you can find it, in fact, we put, if you're on our mailing list, uh, Ed sent out the link so that you can watch it. But um, what happened is, is that Erin did a great job of presenting things and actually the department was quite honest about where the, the program really is lying right now and, and the work that still lies ahead, particularly as it goes statewide in um, in June, but uh, what ended up happening <laughs> is that um, the um, it, it went to the uh, legislative analyst's office, the LAO, who a, a woman who's been very supportive of the self determination program, named Sonia Pettick. And Sonia expressed some concerns about the program that I'm hoping was just misinterpreted because I hope she remains very supportive of the program. Um, but she said things like, um, we are very concerned about, um, you know, two things. Number one, that the state is not prepared for the program to go statewide in June. And therefore, you know, we have concerns about it. And the way that the senators heard that was maybe it shouldn't go statewide. Um, and she was concerned about the low level of participation from the first 2,500 who've been selected. So. And then she also said she has some concerns about people's individual budget amounts and that they may be very high or much higher. And this is supposed to be a cost neutral program. And she wanted to get more data on that. And she kind of wanted this information before things went further. Um, and the senators heard that information. And one of the senators on um, the chair, Senator Eggman, who represents the Stockton area, um, said, listen, it doesn't look like there's a lot of interest in this. It's like a restaurant. If nobody goes to the restaurant, maybe it needs to close, um, which is really quite problematic. Um, there was a lot of freaking out on my end, as well as many other people's ends who were watching it. I was getting lots of texts and I was texting lots of people and we were all kind of coming up and I sent out emails to everybody I know who cares about this stuff to call in and talk about how important the self-determination program was. And I know there's a bunch of you who got through um, and I so appreciate it. And a lot of you who sent emails. Um, uh, then Senator Pan, who represents the Sacramento area said, um, he, it, well, he wasn't as, as significant as what she said, but he did say, you know, why we really need to figure out why people aren't going in and, you know, maybe we should postpone the, the statewide rollout um, if, since not every, you know, we don't have a lot of people in. So you could imagine we were concerned. Nancy Bargeman, the director of DDS, did a great job of defending the program. We we're very, very, very appreciative of that. Um, and um, and then uh, after that, it was uh, Aaron did a, a, you know kind of reiterated what he had said earlier. Um, and then the next panel was on racial and ethnic disparities and DVU's vice president um, Fernando Gomez happened to be speaking on that. I'm sorry, but the sun is like going right in my eyes. There we go. Um, and he he wasn't planning to talk about the self determination program, but he said he spoke for a few minutes about it. Um, and then during public comment, there was a whole bunch of people um, who called in. I, I said something like, um, uh, you know, oh, actually Fernando um, was great because he, he played off of the restaurant theme and he said, listen, if self-determination were a restaurant, there'd be a line around the block. Um, and then um, during public comment, I specifically addressed Senator Eggman and I said, you know, if if self determination were a restaurant, imagine that it was boarded up with bureaucracy and there were all these like barriers, physical barriers in the way on the road just to get to it. So, 
um, you know, she got it. And I offered to meet with her and her staff. And she said, yes, let's do it. Let's arrange it. I've been super busy today on vaccine stuff, but I, I plan on sending an email to her staff and, and arranging for a meeting. So, um, so one of the things I think is really important is for those of you, I mean, these are usually these calls are filled with people who are either in the self-determination program or want to be in the self-determination program or support people in the self-determination program. So it is really important that we flood the committee with emails talking about how important it is that we move forward with the self with the SDP. So in the um, in the chat, I she may have already done it, but I'll ask her to do it again. Um, she, uh, I'm asking Ed to put in the, the email address of the committee and you can just click on it from there. There it is. Thank you. Excellent timing, Ed. Um, it, please email it's SBUD for Senate Budget Committee, I guess. SBUD.committee at senate.ca.gov and um, and tell them, you know, tell them why you want the self-determination program to move forward and, or tell them if you're in it, all the great opportunities you have and really talk a little bit about why you think a lot of people haven't joined in, what your impression is, or maybe you're, you've been having a hard time moving into the self-determination program and explain that to the Senate. It doesn't have to be a long email. They're probably annoyed that we're even giving out their email address, but we don't care. So, so please, um, please do that. This is so critically important. Um, that, and that you want, and this is Fernando saying, and that you want to order number three and hold the onions because it, keeping with the restaurant theme. Thank you, Fernando. Um, yes, yeah, you could also send a tweet, although I doubt I, you should be tweeting at Senator Eggman and Senator Pan, as opposed to the committee, because I seriously doubt the committee itself has any kind of Twitter account. So um, I think that's uh, that's that update. The other just very, very fast update is on our conference. I know that people have had a hard time registering it. We had a call with the platform. We think we have figured out the problem. And we actually want to thank one of our participants who's on the call today, who sat on the phone with us to figure out what her problem was, which we think a lot of people were having the same problem. So if anybody is having still continued issues in registering, you'll see that there's a, you'll go into the registration and there's a movie that you can link to that will walk you through it if you are having problems registering it. Registering, it's actually a pretty straightforward thing, but some people have forgotten to click little buttons or do to little things that makes it so they can't register. Conference is going to be amazing. We're, we're, we're still, we haven't released the agenda yet because I'm still confirming, but we're hopefully having someone from the state give the opening without naming the person since it's not confirmed. And we're hoping having um, a, a several people from the federal government who believe in self-determination. And we're going to have a panel, a, sort of a closing panel on, dis, uh, on how self-determination is really part of the disability justice movement with some of the biggest leaders in the disability rights field. So it's going to be great. You're going to get to meet lots of people, even though it's virtual and everything sucks, we know. So I'm going to move on now to this great program that we have today. And um, uh, you know, those of you in the self-determination program know that one of the most critical pieces of successfully moving into the program is having a great independent facilitator. And um, we, at, we at DVU have trained hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand people to become an independent facilitator, but many of them never actually become an independent facilitator. Many of them are just parents learning about, you know, the self-determination program and don't actually move in to becoming an independent facilitator. So we still have need for more. And those kinds of trainings happen all over the place all the time. But there are a whole bunch of people who are independent facilitators who've been practicing it since the, since the program rolled out. There are some independent facilitators who've been practicing it for 20 years because they've been serving people through the pilot project. And um, David Grady, who is, the, who is the head of the regional office in the I'm forgetting which uh, up there in the San Jose, San Andreas Regional Center area. I don't know you guys uh, have names. Yeah, up there in that northern part of I'm in southern part. 
Um, David Greedy came up with this brilliant idea, which is to gather that independent facilitators, at least in the Northern California area, to you know dialogue and talk. And I know that that same thing happened down in Southern California. And those were things things were happening in person. And then when the pandemic hit, they went online, and all of a sudden, all these people from Southern California started joining the network in the Northern California area. And so we thought it would be a fantastic idea to invite them in, um, starting with David um, and two of the independent facilitators who are very active in the, in the program, um, but to really start about why they exist, um, what they're learning together, what their work is, and, and how these there's going to be a bunch of participants on, in this meeting, how they can you know, be part of the work that you're doing and, and, and meet you. So I'm gonna first start with David Grady. Go ahead, David. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see you. I see some familiar faces and I miss you all. One day we'll all be together again, won't we? Um, <clears throat> appreciate the invitation from Disability Voices United and from Judy Mark and her kind remarks. Um, I, I'm not so sure it was a brilliant idea. I'm just kind of a guy who keeps saying yes until somebody tells me to stop saying yes. And uh, originally uh, the idea came to me from Doug Pascover, who many of you may know. He's with um, Imagine Services in Santa Cruz. And uh, he used to work for Ariba and he was um, an independent facilitator during the, um, um, or, or currently remains an independent facilitator with the uh, pilot program. And Doug came to me a few years ago, actually even before uh, the rollout and says, you know, we need to create uh, we need to build the knowledge base for this project. Uh, he had a curricula and we, uh, through email, sent out an invite and we, for the last four or five years on the, uh, had regular meetings where we're, we were teaching people to become independent facilitators. And as Judy Mark says, it has kind of grown um, Zoom, although we're fed up with the COVID, there have been some opportunities created through Zoom. And one of the opportunities is that we can, meet by Zoom and uh, take on the idea of statewideness. And um, so that is what happened in the past year. And just kind of uh, with the enthusiasm of this community of people who uh, identify themselves as independent facilitators, uh, this network formed and has become what I consider it's moving from kind of, a, it's organically moving from a group of independent facilitators into an emerging trade, trade group. Uh, which I think is what self-determination is all about. It's market driven. When you create a trade, you create trade groups and they're beginning to develop their voices. And so I'm gonna just speak briefly and then turn it over to Chris, Kashan and Kavita. They represent kind of the, like, because this has been an organic process, we haven't formed too many committees, but they kind of represent the leadership. If they were organized into a, 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 a traditional committee, they would probably be the executive committee. So I'll introduce them shortly. But one of the things that I wanted to introduce, and I have, I, I was asked to speak first because I have to leave a little early, is I want to talk about how um, um, from, the, from the concept of the Independent Facilitation Network, it was identified that we're getting a lot of families and a lot of um, uh, people who are um, one, interested in self-determination for their children to be the ones coming to the advisory committee meetings, to be the ones coming for trainings and that sort of thing. We were having a hard time though, getting directly to the self-advocate. So um, again, uh, with, with uh, the IF network is kind of my uh, guide. Um, I uh, worked with the, the intention of forming to a group called the Self-Determination Advocates. And, um, Thank you, Kavi, uh, Kishan. Um, the self determined advocates have been meeting now for two months, and uh, I'm considering them an offshoot of the Independent Facilitation Network or our self-determination community. And I just want to introduce it to the community here to think of it in terms of your role as facilitators or as families who are active in facilitation. This network meets on the second Monday of the month. It is led by, the, uh, by the, the advocates themselves and facilitated by independent facilitators. And this is an example of our invitation. I'm not sure if some of you have received it, but we wanted to make it somewhat unique and have it be sent directly to the individuals in self-determination 
for those who are interested in self-determination. And so we thought the best way to do that is visually. And we created a brief little YouTube and having the chair of the committee, uh, Nasreen Zare, invite everybody who is an advocate in self-determination to come to our meeting. So go ahead, Zare, let's hear you. Oh, Kashan, you need to do the um, stop share and then uh, allow the, the uh, Zoom to, to pick up the, uh, the audio. You would need to unmute yourself, Kishan. We had a, so wait, the chairperson of the self-determination advocacy group. We had a great meeting last month. Please join us again on the second Monday of the month. See the file for details. Anyone who is in self-determination or is interested to join is invited. We are going to talk about our personal center plan and some of the great things we are doing. We will also share any upcoming celebration. Hope to see you there. So um, we've had about uh, between, uh, uh, I guess we've had about two dozen people come to our meetings and we're off to a great start. This is our first. Uh, Meeting was in January, our second was in um, February. March 8th is our next one. This is a committee for self-advocates. Of course, we won't turn anybody away, but so far what we've done is we've divided the, the attendees into self-advocates from Southern California. And they go into one uh, breakout room and then the self-advocates from Northern California go into another breakout room. And then those people who are facilitators or parents we have a third breakout room. Hi, Hi. everyone. And in each breakout room, we go over a particular topic. So last month, we went over person-centered planning. And it was just delightful to hear what, what the self-advocates were saying about their, about their um, self-determination plans and the process and how they just uh, really uh, feel that that's kind of a whole change in how they understand the lives and the services they receive. So it's been a very successful thing. Uh, it's supported by the Independent Facilitation Network. And we encourage you to, uh, when you receive these invitations, to share them with your family member and invite and have them join us at our meeting. So we're very excited about that. Um, so I, that's my point. And I just kind of wanted to introduce this idea to talk to you about the broad a potentialities within a network like the Independent Facilitation Network to begin attending to things that we are we know are so needed for self-determination to move forward and be successful. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Chris and remain available till uh, I have to attend to my next meeting and be able to answer any questions that come up. Thank you. And uh, Chris, you're up. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Um, we're, we're moving on now to Chris Wex who is an independent facilitator with Abound Services and has done some great work up in the Northern California area, but I think he also works all over the state. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Yeah, you bet. And you know what? I just want to put myself on an equal platform here with Kishan and Kavita. And Kavita, I think I'm actually going to hand it over just to introduce us here. Um, and I'll, I'll take sort of the second part of this, but um, hopefully a short presentation about what we do and who we are, and uh, we can just yeah, answer questions and whatnot. So uh, Kavita, you want to kind of introduce us here? Um, yeah, absolutely. So uh, David Grady already uh, kind of segued into what how this came about. Uh, Doug and David conducted our first independent facilitator training here um, at the State Council's office. And at that table, uh, there was this idea that was mooted with regard to forming uh, a network or a group of individuals who come for regular IF trainings and the IF roundtable so that we can all figure out how to um, navigate this uh, rather new uh, program for many of us, um, which was self-determination. And uh, that's how this network was formed. And as we grew, we had uh, many independent facilitators, wonderful people who joined us. And one of the people who joined us is uh, Chris uh, from uh, Abound Services, Chris Wax. And also I, I do wanna uh, mention that one of the, the, 
the big initiatives that we took on was to arrange for um, consumers or selectees who of the self-determination program, uh, self-advocates and also family advocates to uh, get together. That was what we started in the San Andreas catchment area. Um, this started way back in 2018. And then gradually we've, uh, since then, we've grown. And with COVID, we just went virtual. The best thing that could have happened during COVID is that it made the world a lot more smaller uh, for a lot of us. And we all got together on virtual platforms. So um, I'm going to have uh, Chris talk a little bit about uh, Bound Services. If we can go to who we are and uh, what all Chris right. does as a person, we can go to uh, Chris and you can introduce yourself and then we can go on to Kishan and then me. Yeah, all right. So Pragna and uh, Bound Services were two IF agencies and we're one of many, many different IF agencies. So what we're really here to talk about is the independent facilitator network. Um, but but this is just a little credibility on who we individually are, Kavita, Kishan, and myself. So I, I, uh, I started at Bound Services. I've helped about 50 plus um, um, clients inside and outside of self-determination um, in, in sort of the self-determination process. Prior to that, I have sort of a long history of advocacy. I was on the show a bit uh, a while a while back, um, uh, do, uh, you may have caught me on a, um, a segment for um, uh, for special education. So I spoke here about that. But anyway, my advocacy background prior to self determination was in um, agency advocacy. So IHSS, special ed, medical, and so so those of you familiar with you know uh, self determination know that that's kind of a big part of this sometimes when it comes to uh, advocating for generic services and understanding those limitations. So, um, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a, in, in some of the regional centers around the state that have coaching programs and sort of those, uh, those programs in place, I'm a, I'm a regional center coach and trainer, uh, participated in IF um, training and and yeah, I'm in 16 different regional centers, including all of Southern California. So if you need support, my info's there in uh, Prognia. So you guys, do your pitch. Who are you? So uh, Kishan, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, sure. Hi, I'm Kishan. Um, I am an ally at Prognia. Um, we actually are uh, independent facilitators, uh, person planners. We also offer uh, um, self-determination coaching at multiple um, regional centers. And um, one of our interests of being part of the network was to see if we can grow the network of independent facilitators because that's that's something which is, um, uh, as per self-determination, something which, uh, which actually is a key element uh, when uh, we're trying to facilitate for an individual to be able to reach their um, hopes and dreams. And um, we wanted to see if we can get more families trained in this uh, independent facilitation and also trying to see if all of us can learn together to see how we can actually navigate this process. Um, and that's how we are, we try to take an active role in this organizing of this uh, network, which happens every, um, every month actually. So I think the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about what we do at um, the, uh, um, Oh, yeah. Network. So I'm trying to see if I can. Ah, oh, there you go. It's navigating the thing. So um, the network actually, um, we are growing. Uh, this this data is from almost a month ago. We're getting a lot of hits on our Slack. We've had close to around 250 independent facilitators join the group. This is statewide um, uh, in all parts of uh, almost representing 20 different regional centers across the nation, across the state, actually. Um, and we have more metrics about this. So Chris, do you want to share some more about some information about the metrics about the Slack, which we have? Yeah, you mean, I mean, um, Slack is kind of our primary real-time live. If you're not familiar with Slack, it's just, it's just a message board. Um, I mean, uh, the, the thing about, the thing about it is there are so many really challenging bureaucratic technical questions about what it means to support someone through the self-determination process. We have questions that range from obviously welfare and inst institution codes questions and um, how, uh, how a, a budget or um, a spending plan is constructed to how different agencies work and, and is Department of Rehab really the generic resource in play here in this question or not? And so, I mean, it, the problem the problem is, is that it is a very challenging sort of uh, project to undertake. 
And to what Judy mentioned at the top of the hour here, it 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 really is a, a it's a challenging process that does require um, really our community, you and me and all of us, really just sort of our full heads and hearts in the game in order to make sure that everyone has access to this program, because it's just, it's not that clear um, sometimes, some of the problems that arise in the process of going into self-determination. So the independent facilitator network was designed to meet the need of a problem, which is how do we answer the 101 questions that we come up serving our individual clients in the process of getting them into self-determination, whether those folks are our family members, or whether we're serving in a professional capacity. So, you know, there, there may be somewhere between, there's about 130 people on Slack and we're just, we just ask each other questions. We give each other news. We give each other the latest DDS updates. We, we share the latest controversies and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we, and we also, we just, we meet once a month. First Wednesday of each month, you'll see there down at current projects. One of the other major things we do is as a network, we're very interested in making sure that everyone who is interested in participating in self-determination has the answers to the questions that they need and is connected to the resources in, uh, in terms of independent facilitation or person-centered planners that they wanna have in order to um, find their way into self-determination. So we meet monthly on the third March, the uh, third Friday, sorry, I said third March there. Um, the uh, the third Friday of each month of each month from two thirty to four p.m. So um, so you know stay tuned if you're involved in any of the Facebook pages related to self determination right now. Um, I'm on those uh, posting the latest links uh, as they arise for um, uh, participating in in those. So whether you're an independent facilitator or someone interested in participating in self determination yourself or your family member. Um, you know, I think we have some resources for you that I think would be helpful. So yeah, we have our IF roundtable uh, uh, noted there first Wednesday of each month. So next week, we're going to be meeting. Interested in uh, joining us? I, I, I put the link in the, um, the channel for our Slack channel, and you'll be able to see the links for our meetings and so forth there. If you're interested in our next meet and greet, if you're a self-determination participant and want to participate in uh, you know, just a Q&A and like, oh, I need help getting through this stage of the process or whatever. We're, um, we're there just to offer technical support. Or if you need an IF, we're here for that too. Uh, again, there's about 130 of us on Slack. Many of us join us on these calls. Just would really love to support you in that way. And then lastly, sort of our ongoing and new endeavor is that we really are interested in um, uh, deepening all of our knowledge um, about what um, what sort of domains of knowledge that would be necessary in order to make self-determination more successful. And that involves things that might be a, a little askew of what you, the listener right now, are interested in, or maybe not. For example, um, we're interested in uh, job opportunities that might be available and job development opportunities that might be available for self-determination participants that would be unique opportunities. And so we're putting together some trainings for that other trainings around um, uh, special education and other topics that, uh, that, that might meet sort of a specific, you know, subset of you who would be really interested. And so I would just encourage you to kind of stay tuned. And like I said, we're, we're trying to put our name out there and our, um, uh, you know, the information that we can have to give um, out there. Uh, we're a statewide organization from Kern County to San Francisco and, um, and from, you know, San Diego up to the the, the high Eastern Sierras. So I, I, I do hope that we continue to grow and meet what you, uh, what all of you need on this, uh, <laughs> on this call today. Yeah. Uh, Kavita, I know you're trying to jump in here, please. Yeah. I just wanted uh, everybody to think of uh, the IFN as more of a support group for all independent facilitators. Um, uh, there's also a very, uh, uh, unique channel that we have at the IFN is hashtag today I learned. So it's about what we learn because each of us, every uh, consumer, every uh, interaction is a learning moment for all of us. So I think um, that's a huge plus of the IF uh, independent facilitator network. Um, and also the fact that 
um, you know, some of us are SDP coaches and we typically do not take on independent facilitation if we are coaching somebody. So it's a great way for us to refer local independent facilitators uh, from each of those regional centers to be um, working with individuals that we are coaching for um, self-determination. And at the end of the day, um, you know, it's all about independent facilitation as much as we get trained in, um, We'll, uh, we, it's something about that's extremely unique because it's unique to the individuals that we serve um, because uh, it's about the implementation of the HCBS final rule, right? It's about getting people integrated into the community, being part of the community. And how do we get out there and talk to people to make sure that the community is uh, accepting and appreciative of individuals who are neurodiverse as we call it at Pragna. So, um, that's the uh, whole philosophy that's driving the independent facilitation network. And we'd love to uh, be in, able to invite um, self-advocates and also family advocates and anybody who wants to be part of the IF network. And thank you, Judy, for you know, uh, leading the uh, path um, and for getting this wonderful program, being instrumental in getting this uh, passed. And we really wanna make sure that a self-determination um, is something that's successful for individuals um, across, I mean, across the state of California. So oh, thank right. you so much to everybody. And continues, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and the network is here to support you guys. And I just want to stress on the fact that it's about networking. It's about learning from each other. And anybody, any level, if you're told you just got a training, you never got trained and you want to get trained, uh, join the network. We'd be happy to connect you with people who can train you on the on on being an IF, and uh, we provide resources for you guys to be successful in supporting individually or supporting. There's I a question wanna... here about Slack. If someone said, "What is Slack?" <laughs> so oh, Slack <laughs> is a messaging platform. <laughs> uh, I know uh, it. It's a little. Um... Well, it's very easy. Just go to Slack and then uh, just click on that link and then you have to create a user profile and then you automatically get uh, logged into this. It may be a little unuser friendly to start off with, but you know, uh, the moment you come on, there's a whole bunch of people who will welcome you on to Slack. So you automatically feel like, oh, this is great. <laughs> but I just wanna, I wanna share a success story. Um, and I do wanna say this, and I'm very proud of this, uh, is the fact that I have a, uh, now 16 year old neurodiverse daughter, she has autism and um, she also um, is a self-determination selectee and a consumer right now. She is in self-determination and successfully so since September of last year. And uh, it, we couldn't have asked for a better program. So, uh, and uh, I just wanted to share that with everybody, uh, whoever's here, if you're still thinking about getting into self-determination or want uh, some kind of, um, you know, uh, testimonial with regard to how successful this program has been, uh, I would like to say that please reach out to me. <laughs> so, I just you. joined Slack. Yay, welcome. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Welcome to the People Slackers. People have been telling me to join Slack for a long time at UCLA where I teach, they're all into Slack and I've never been on it in my life. So I clicked <laughs> on your link and I have, I made an account. I have no idea what to do next, but I'm very excited about. <laughs> so it, it, I can quickly show you the screen if you want to see it. Uh, yeah. Okay, here you go. This is the screen. Well, we have all the discussions on the left. If you look at this, all the discussions are going on here. Uh, our, this is our channel, which is for specifically for that. And we have many people chiming in on different topics on the extreme right. And all the hashtags are here as in channels. You can add a channel of discussion. You can join in. Uh, all the stuff right here. As you join the link, which uh, Chris has posted, you will get a comment to um, post your welcome. So you can actually start saying hello to people right in, then and there. So it's a work in progress though, but it's, it's interesting. It's, it might seem a little bit, uh, you know, overwhelming in the, in the beginning part, but later on you get a hang of it. <laughs> I'm excited. I am now, I see a, my welcome message from Chris. Thank you very much. Um, I will, I will, you, I will call you guys. It, because I'm almost certain I will get stuck. Um, <laughs> I'm like, like nobody here is the smartest person in the room. The smartest person in the room is the group. Yeah. So like, uh, so, so hashtag stupid questions is one of the channels on Very the slide, popular. which is like, it's like, I'm stuck at this point in the budget because 
my regional center case manager is telling me that um, I can't I can't pursue these personal care attendant hours until I've gotten a denial letter from IHSS. Is this true? And then the entire group can kind of weigh in on that and how to proceed. So that's that's the kind of thing I'm talking yeah. about. So it's so I'm so happy to hear more about your group because that is what we do here, really more from a partic totally participant perspective as opposed to IFs, even though a lot of IFs participate in the STP Connect. And it is to me as an advocate, because I, I am not an independent facilitator, um, I train them, but I am not one and have no interest in being one. I'm so glad you guys do. Um, but it, I, it is really, we should probably meet regularly so that I hear these things because we advocate on um, yeah. our, it should be the S to see systemic issues um, and try to, try to get them to, to cor uh, correct things uh, either on a regional center wide basis or certainly on a statewide basis. So, so. Judy, um, Judy, I want to ask you a couple questions. <laughs> because, sure. I'm, just because I'm the host. A, right? <laughs> um, a couple of questions. So we as a network, we're trying to professional ourselves, pro professionalize ourselves and develop, you know, like a code of conduct, like many other trade organizations. And I'm thinking of in particular, like I'm a member of COPA, which is a, um, a, a special education advocacy organization across um the country and you know we all have our code of conduct and um in your know, beliefs and sort of a, a general perspective and, and what i'm asking is um i'm just wondering if what you think uh, uh an organization like ours that is prepared to move together um it ought to be doing in the face of some of the the questions and concerns that you've been seeing as a strong advocate um for self-determination um uh, we're we're we have some of our, our own ideas and, and I just, um, we just wanna make sure that as, as I would view you as a partner in this and I just, I just wanna hear what this group and what you think in terms of uh, who we ought to write to, what we ought to say and, and yeah. things of that nature. I'm just curious. Yeah, I, you know, when we were first writing the self-determination law, we sat in a room a lot. I mean, you heard about it, the original concept being on the back of a napkin at a restaurant in Burbank at the airport. It, that is actually completely true. Um, but that was just the, you know, a few words. The, the real intense outline um, happened over a period of months as we were negotiating with different, di different di um, you know, with the, with the Association of Regional Centers and negotiating with DDS and negotiating with um, other stakeholders um, and getting the law passed. And where we always came back to was this concept of the critical piece of the independent facilitator. And, um, you know, somebody was putting in the chat, I saw that there's no requirement of an independent facilitator. And that is absolutely correct. But I want to inform people of why it's that way. Because it's not that we didn't believe that people should have an independent facilitator. It's just we couldn't mandate it because you don't always need one every single year. We, we took everything from what was learned in the pilot project. So in the pilot project, which at that point had been about 17 years old, people found that in the first five years, people needed an independent facilitator. They needed them a lot, particularly in the first couple of years, they really needed to, move, to help to find, to identify services and supports, to do the person-centered planning. But once people's lives were kind of in a groove, unless something dramatically changed, like they got out of school, they moved out on their own, they had a health crisis, they, um, you know, they went into school, whatever it was. Unless there was a dramatic change, people's lives were pretty consistent because their needs were being met, right? And so while they had a person-centered plan every year, sometimes their person-centered plans were very modest changes of the previous year. So because of that, um, I think it's, you know, we said nobody needs to have, nobody needs to have it every single year. But let me tell the 94 people who are on this meeting today, that if you were just entering the self-determination program, you should absolutely have an independent facilitator. It is critical. I wrote the freaking law. I have trained a thousand people to become an independent facilitator. And we hired an independent facilitator for my son. We hired a highly experienced one. We I didn't want one who knew like less than we did, but I knew that as my son, as, as the mom, I was too close to my son. I was too close to him to say, this is, this is a great idea for your life. You know, it's like 
he needs, to, I, I, it was not going to be true person-centered planning if I was leading it. I have met a number of parents who said, oh, I know my son better than anybody else. I am sure that is true. Absolutely. I know my son better than anybody else. However, that is different than my son knowing himself better than I do. Okay. That's the difference. So then I've also heard, well, my child can't express their preferences. That is, that's just not possible. I mean, I, I think that obviously if somebody is in a vegetative state, I, I, would, I would go with you on that. That is true. If people literally cannot express their opinion in any way, shape or form. But, I, you know, I, I challenged some parents once when they said, oh, our daughter's in a hospital bed. She has epilepsy. You know, she can't express it. And I said, oh, really? So she doesn't like favor one food over the other. Oh, yeah. No, she likes peas over spinach. I said, OK, there is a preference. So spinach should never be on her meal plan ever. That's her choice. She's an adult. And then I said, does she like people more than others? She goes, oh yeah, there's just one nurse that comes in. She always turns her head away. And then there's other other nurse. She always gets a smile on her face. I said, eh, if it were up to me, I'd be firing the nurse where she's turning her head away and try and giving more hours to the one where she smiles at, or finding somebody else that she that she prefers. And so all of a sudden they said, oh yeah, that's right. Now can my son? express like detailed preferences for lots, you know, for some things that are really intensively minute, maybe not, but we have a general sense of where he's going. And that is why an independent facilitator can really bring that out in him. And we learn things that we never thought before. So I'm just telling people, please, please, please use an independent facilitator as you're moving into the program. Some people need them very intensively, particularly adults who don't have family in their life, often need much more intensive services from an independent facilitator. That's right. And, you know, it's like um, there's uh, so much, uh, there's a bit of schmaltiness attached to this, which is like, it's like, this sounds like a big sales pitch. And it, I mean, it kind of is because we are independent facilitators. So, I mean, so like, I just encourage you to choose the plan that works best for yourself. Um, but, um, but we're all aware that the self-determination process is just bureaucratically rather intense um, and requires a lot of thought processes that aren't typically associated with normal living. <laughs> and so it's just, it's just really a helpful resource and we just want to offer that. You know, there's a lot of people in the chat here who um, mentioned a few things. And in particular, I just want to say that like Carolyn here, she said, I think that we need a list of IFs by county so that we can forward them to participants and their families that the regional centers won't give out. Um, well, so I get the sense that we need a, a, a list of IFs by county. And it, we're just not quite there yet as a network, the IFN, but I, I just, in the next couple of months, um, I'm very optimistic that we're going to have a platform that's going to allow everyone in the state of California to be able to search for an IF by state and by language and a uh, number of other factors. That's going to be something that's going to be coming down the line. But um, uh, Carolyn, I hear you and we agree and we're trying to work on that real hard. Um, it's a challenging problem and, and we've partnered with some folks who, are, who may be able to help us with that. So I, I just, I hope that you'll kind of stay tuned and I'll just, like I said, Facebook groups and however you're connected to the self-determination community, we'll just try and continue to put it out there, right? Um, so. I, would, I would encourage uh, whoever is interested in finding uh, out about independent facilitators to um, join the independent facilitation network. And just like how you attend these SDP connect calls, if there's trainings that are happening, learn about it at those trainings as well, because it's kind of like, if there's a list, sometimes there's also the issue of how that list is being updated, how often, who is maintaining that list, right? So um, sometimes all the names may not be on the list. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we just don't wanna, uh, the whole thing, anybody can be an independent facilitator if um, you have uh, that person-centered thinking uh, approach and at the same time have a little bit of guidance and knowledge as to what you need to do and how you want to serve uh, those who need the support. Um, so I hope that kind of, I just wanted to add that to what you were saying, Chris. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to just address some things that I've seen in the chat. Um, so I am not a fan of lists because lists just mimic the traditional system, right? Um, and, um, you know, I think it's really important that people think outside the box in the self-determination program. That being said, people are drawing up lists all over the place. 
and there will be lists of people in the independent um, facilitators network. There will be, I know that the regional office, the LA regional office of the state council keeps a list. Anybody can go on those lists. It is not an endorsement of the IFs on that list. Um, I, I want to give an example of somebody who did something that is exactly the kind of thing I have that you should be doing is that there's a woman named Roxy who, in my regional center who's amazing and she has an adult son and they have kept in touch with one of his um, speech therapists over the years and the, or maybe you're a teacher, a special ed teacher, whatever it was, it was somebody that has known her son since childhood and he's now an adult and they instead of finding an IF, they got somebody who knows them, knows the person, and got that person trained to be an IF. And so that, that is another way of going about it is to say, God, this person would be a great independent facilitator because the training, that first of all, there's absolutely no certification needed. While I have led, and just last Saturday led a, an IF training where people get will get a certificate afterwards, um, I, it's, it doesn't matter. It's not in the law. What the law requires is that the per people who are independent facilitators must have training in person-centered planning, which you can get at multiple sources, including just watching videos online, um, training in the principles of the self-determination program, which you can do by looking at the orientation materials that are on the DDS website, um, and training about how the program works, which is also in the orientation. Um, the other thing that I just want to say, from my opinion, is that if you are choosing an independent facilitator, one of the questions, first of all, in the orientation materials, you should have seen a set of questions that you should be asking your independent facilitator. And um, there, I wrote this question, so they're, they're uh, more than you need. You don't need to ask all of those questions, but those are, you know, some ideas and you might come up with your own, but, you know, there are how many person-centered plans have you done? How many times have you, um, you know, what happens if I have a crisis in the, uh, on a Saturday afternoon? Can I reach you? You know, it's like you need to know if this person's going to fit with your life. So please use that. That's part of the DDS orientation materials. It is also, um, we have something called the interchange, the self-determination interchange, which is tons of information on there. You can, there's a whole section, a forum that you can ask about independent facilitators on there and and, and, and get information, you should, um, in, in there is that list of questions too. So highly recommend um, you interview a bunch of different people, feel who fits you. You can always change your independent facilitators as well. Cool. So I, I also, before we go further, I want people to get a chance in the audience to ask questions. And so the, let me just tell people, I forgot to mention, so sorry that we have Spanish interpretation simultaneous to today but I have a feeling people know that because they come every single week and they just know that about us. So you can go down to interpretation at the bottom of your screen and click either English or Spanish. And we also have simultaneous um, uh, captioning uh, right now. Um, so, um, but I also wanna tell people, this is how you ask a question. They changed it on Zoom. You go down to reactions and you click on raise hand and you'll see a little hand thing. You can't just like physically raise your hand like this because I we have so many people on, I can't see you all. So please use the, go to reactions and raise your hand and I will give you the opportunity to unmute yourself. So go ahead and um, use the raise hand feature now while we I give Kavina, Kashan, David and Chris a chance to respond to all the stuff I've been saying. I think actually David, David's on his way out here in about nine minutes. David, anything you wanted to add that like has been discussed just because I want to give you that shot before you got to go. Oh, you're, you're, you're muted. muted. David. You'd think I'd know better. Um, <laughs> I, you, like I said, it's a generic process and this, this group is emerging and, and uh, Judy's right. There are many of us who have received facilitation training, but are not considering ourselves uh, independent facilitators or facilitators who want to do it for money. But you, st you still are invited to the network because we want to get your, there's a collective wisdom going on there are some amazing questions being asked that I would never think that this would be some of the struggles we'd have to do, deal with through self-determination. Um, it's a great resource to, to, to follow those ongoing conversations. And if it turns out that there is a subgroup within this network of just parents as facilitators 
that want to start meeting separately or independently of the larger group, we can always divide into those sorts of sections. Um, that's, I think that's pretty much the point. Um, just we, like I said, it's organic. We want it to grow. We want it to emerge. And by doing that, we're just seeing some amazing things happen as self-determination is doing what it's supposed to do, which is creating a market for, for our folks. So I really appreciate, appreciate what's going on. Um, so there is a question um, that is from, I don't know the name of the person, but it says on their thing, uh, B-M-I-K-A-H-A. -A. You'll need to unmute yourself. Go ahead. B-M-I-C-K, there you are. Hi, hi, my name is Dr. Bethany McAhill and um, I'm an advocate here over in the VMRC region, mm -hmm. uh, Stockton, um, Modesto, yep. Manteca. And um, <clears throat> we've been really creative in our, in our, in our uh, self-determination program. Um, I had problems recruiting staff, so I started recruiting consultants. And like we have all these CrossFit people working with me and my son has about three micro businesses in the works. <clears throat> and um, I, when I heard that the legislature is thinking of cutting back on the rollout, I don't know how legally they can do that legally because it's a law now for them to, to with, you know, the state legislator, legislature that she told us earlier in the meeting want to, you know, cut back more on the rollout of the self-determination program. Um, how can they do that? Yeah, great question. They can do it, but they'd have to do it by creating another law. So if they do nothing, then it will roll out. If they, they would have to proactively do something, which guess what? They can. They're state legislators. They can do that. Well, what about uh, the federal government and you know the, the Supreme Court? Yeah, this is a state law, not a federal law. I know. <laughs> so they have the capacity to do that. I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen because the governor doesn't want it to happen. DDS doesn't want it to happen. So I think we're going to be okay. But I think it's a good idea to educate our, our state legislators, especially because you're from Stockton. So it's Senator Eggman is your senator. So oh, yeah. I don't live in Stockton. I'm in Antica, but yeah, oh. I'm going to write to her. I think she would be very good, you know, shared from right, the right people. Yeah. We're a small, small, we're a small group of our very dynamic. So um, I'm also a certified uh, facilitator. Um, I haven't been doing anything with it because I'm a parent first. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Hear you. <laughs> the, uh, the truth is you, um, that, that, there's really no substitute for um, for for the masses calling in, showing up at their state senator's office, and making a fuss. Um, uh, and I have that experience from past work as um, like I was involved with the CCS redesign committees and um, the mess revolving around that. And it's just you really you really have to. You really kind of have to show up and 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 just make a phone call or two if you're i mean you're in stockton so like if you can make the trip over to, to sacramento 1a and just literally show up for the um the the chief of staff's meeting with uh, your state senator or whoever that that's the that's the ticket to make change like that happen it's just those stories those stories the people that show up are uh, are uh, 10 to 50 multiplier to um, anybody that kind of sits on a, um, a like a like a webcast here uh, and and complains. I mean, if if you go there and make a fuss, that's the big thing you can do um, to make sure that 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 you're being heard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I see Christina. My second time talking to you today. Hi, Christina. Oh wait, I have to let you unmute. Sorry, I forgot. That's our new that's our new security measure. Sorry, thank you. And I'm sorry, we're in the car uh, for no doctor's appointment coming back. But um, two quick things, and nice seeing you again or talking to you again today. Um, 
So the orientation, if you can just um, confirm and let other people know, um, you know, like I asked last week when you were at our, our meeting, um, what can people do right now who are on the waiting list ahead of time? And sorry if you already talked about this, but the orientation was really important information. And our regional center at North Los Angeles is looking into seeing if that's, if we can do that there. But uh, from what we discussed last week at our um, local advisory committee meeting, we could possibly attend an orientation at another regional center. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. okay. So we're trying, I, I, I helped to write the law. It's very, very unclear about where you have to take the orientation, which is good. It just basically says that self-determination participants or their families must go through orientation. It doesn't say you must go through orientation at your own regional center. And nowhere in the guidance that DDS has ever provided has said it must be at your own regional center. It's just the way it's happened, right? So, um, it, you know, I, I kind of feel like uh, it's something I actually talked to the state council about a couple of years ago. It's like, let's let the local advisory committees just host one or let's let the statewide advisory committee host one. Um, we might do one at our conference. In, in April, just so people can say, okay, I've been through this, this orientation and I'm ready to go. I mean, the, the, the problem with the orientations though, honestly, is you can't just like see it all at once. It, that's what's been happening is people have done the orientation all at once. And then they, by the time they get to the spending plan, they forgot what they learned a couple months earlier. It's, it's not a good way to do orientation. So I know that the statewide self-determination advisory committee has a group of chairs from around the state who are going to be working on redeveloping the orientation over the next month or so. And we're going to put them into small sort of training clumps or modules. Like it'll be, first you're going to learn about the person center plan and you're, we're going to give you, you know, an hour and a half on that. And then you go out and you do your person center plan. It, then we're going to give you one on developing your individual budget and unmet need and you learn about that and then you go forth and do that. And the same exact thing, you know, as you're doing your and, and we're hoping to get them online so that people can go back and re listen to it. So, so we're, we're doing that together as a statewide committee and hopefully we'll have that done in the next month or so. So Judy, can I yeah, just add to what, what you were saying? So uh, one thing that I can share, um, what we're doing at the San Andreas Regional Center um, is that um, the service coordinators now uh, are giving one-to-one -one individual orientations. If people can't attend the, the main orientation, you can actually reach out to your service coordinator and they're able to do that. Uh, there was also a couple of exceptions that were made for people who couldn't attend the main uh, the bigger orientation for smaller groups and um, some of us who were trained in it in the train the trainer program we were able to do the uh, you know like the promotoras or the uh, community organizations uh, we were able to do the orientation go over the orientation with um, some of the um, uh, consumers um, there's also something that we learned uh, which is uh, an LMS that's been made available to the regional centers as well as uh, through DDS uh, this is where it's a learning management um, software where you can actually click through uh, the different modules and you can learn, uh, go through the entire orientation process as well. Um, that's another option in the event that, um, you know, your regional center is not making it available. These are things that you can take to your local advisory committee as public too, and you raise the questions and say, these are the solutions. Can you pick one of these and tell us how to go about it? So that's another option. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, I see Lisa Walker. Go ahead. And then after Lisa, I see you, Sally. Um, did you figure out how to raise your hand, Sally? Because it's easier, but I'll find you. And so Sally, you're after. Sally Kampa. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Walker. I've been uh, waiting three years to get onto self-determination. Uh, and the first um, lottery, I didn't get picked. Uh, we didn't get picked. Second lottery, my daughter didn't get picked. So I'm still waiting. But meantime, while I was talking to our regional center, they are more so discouraging, not encouraging, uh, meaning that there is no difference in funding versus a traditional versus self-determination. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you're doing the extra work for really nothing. And I made a point that 
I have no funding. All I got was one toothbrush. So, and they're like, that's how it's gonna be continue until um, she becomes adult. And in where I, I live, um, we're a rural area. A lot of people don't even know what self-determination is. And I get my information from the LA County and uh, Sacramento County. I don't get any information from Central California. And also when I do have IPP, I, I uh, agree with Mr. Fernando that I get intimidated because English is my second language. So when I have a manager and a, a social worker, a system manager comes in, they talk about this equity and all that, their uh, lingo, I, I get overwhelmed and I get speechless. I just say, okay, because at this time, I'm not sure what to say. So uh, what I did was uh, my girlfriend, she is Caucasian and she's very fluent in English and she know what to say. My daughter needs it way greater than her needs. And she told me that, I agree with you. Your daughter needs are way greater than mine. It's not fair. I get more service than you do. So she um, uh, educated for me. So I was able to get uh, services but I'm still not getting ABA therapy. I've been trying to get ABA therapy for three years. They told me that I need to provide denial from the insurance. I got a letter from the uh, my uh, daughter's primary uh, care physician, neurologist, because uh, my daughter needed behavioral services. I still don't get ABA therapy. And they have never told me that, um, that uh, regional center could provide the ABA therapy. For three years. And I, what regional center are you with? Uh, I'm uh, with the Central uh, Valley uh, CVRC, Central okay. Valley okay. Regional okay. Center. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you said so that. And means I talk, you're in Fresno. Yeah, here. I even talked to, yes, I even talked to director about it. So I went for a whole week of researching and they went to. Uh, DDS website, and I finally had uh, um, the call with uh, their manager, service manager, and she told me, you know, you have to uh, 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 go through your, you know, the other services, and we're the last source of, uh, 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 last resort to provide services. And then I finally say, you know, uh, according to uh, DDS website, you're supposed to provide that information. And that's when she said, yes, you're right. And then she then pursued with uh, offering information, but if you don't do your research and tell them, they're not gonna provide the information to your regional center. So when I was hearing all that, um, the counselor with the, the they have wrong information. Yeah. We don't get information. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even know that we're supposed to get PPE. Southern California, Northern <laughs> California, people are getting PPE. I had no idea that we're supposed to get the PPE. So when I contacted the regional center, they told me, no, we, we provide PPE to Fresno. No one contacted us with the PPE. Yeah, so and then I then told to my girlfriend. Yeah, so Lisa, here's what I want. It's, um, we try to resolve individual issues related to the self-determination program, but yours sounds like it's very, very significant. So I just yes. want to know- I, that I, I want to do all of it. <laughs> yeah, right, I get it. So Lisa, here's the thing. I'm gonna introduce you to two amazing people who are here on our plan, and maybe you guys are here on our program who are, and maybe you can meet through the chat. There's Michelle Smith, who is the chair of the Central Valley Local Advisory Committee. And there's Carolyn Talalian, who's the vice chair and is on the board of Disability Voices United. They are both very, very experienced parents. Um, Michelle has three children um, served by the regional centers. Um, and Carolyn is not only a, um, a parent of an adult, but she's also uh, a social worker and helps children transition into adulthood um, at Children's Hospital of Fresno. So, they are, I, I, I really want you to connect with them because they also know ex all, lots of people at CVRC and let's, let's get your daughter taken care of, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, Thank so you so much. Connect them through the chat. 
Yeah, Ju Judy, the yeah. other thing, my experience with this a little bit is that, um, you know, um, uh, Michelle um, and um, who's the other person you mentioned? I'm sorry. Caroline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're they're going to be, they're gonna be like, like great resources. Yeah, they're going to be great resources. What, what, what sometimes helps, it, it, this is like the psychological dynamic at work here, Lisa. You, you have someone coming in from, you know, I'm an expert coming in, right? And um, and they're they're gonna they're gonna have uh they're gonna be they're gonna be it, it's almost there's like a permission structure that's then created whereby the um the regional center service coordinator case manager director whoever is gonna be able to be allowed to like learn oh no so actually this is how the process ought to work over here and then. It, 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 there, there's, um, there's a very diplomatic process that works there where somebody comes in and then kind of changes the conversation a little bit. So no matter who you choose, I think just the process of having somebody else sort of speak for a meeting or two will hopefully allow you to be able to <coughs> the tide. Can on, you, um, you know, say the conflicts that you have there going on, um, uh, with your with your uh, regional center team that that's my hope it, it, that's just my like it's kind of like a basic like psychological dynamic thing going on with that I, I hope that's helpful but that's just kind of something that i've experienced so let me let me tell you a good example for a disparity my Lisa, girlfriend's Lisa, aunt Lisa, i'm so sorry maybe we can come back to you i want to give other people who have questions okay a chance, and if we still have more time before the end we'll come back to you okay Thank you. Um, Patty Wong, you're, oh, no, no, Sally Kampa. Hold on, let me find you. Let me unmute. I got her, Judy. Oh, thank you so much, Ed. Okay, hello, everybody. Hi, Sally. Hello, everybody. Hi. I have some great news. So we're supposed to speak to our senators and I am, uh, happy to announce that I just received an email from my Senator um, Ben Hueso from the 40th Senator uh, Senate District, and he wants to congratulate me for being elected the woman of the year. Yeah, that's great. That's wow. <laughs> so yeah, he says, I would like to officially congratulate you for being selected as woman of the year for the Senate district. You are among a group of successful and talented women. Anyway, um, I'll be meeting with him. And so, yeah, I'll be talking to him and hopefully uh, put in a really good word for yeah. what to achieve. Yeah, I, you deserve it. That's fantastic. I'm so happy for you, Sally. That's great. Oh, thank you. Well, you've had, you've had a rough year, so yay. Um, Patty Wong, you're next. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Uh, everyone, I am new to this self-determination program. I did not realize it until early this year. So after I learned it, I'm really so on it. So I reached out to my regional center. And of course they said that nothing for me. And because of situation too, and I learned from Judy last week, I also reached out to my regional center to ask for IPP for my son. My question for you is, what is the best way to prepare for a meeting with regional center negotiating to get into the self-determination program? Because every time when I ask them, they said that they don't have anything available and I need to wait for June. And from the, all the conversations I learned from this group, it seems it's more like a, like, a, like a battle. It's not like they're serving you. So it seems like I need to go in and prepare like a, pre representing myself like an attorney. That's how I visualize myself. And so it would be very nice, I think, if there is like a process of like a worksheet or a cheat sheet. I can bring in, I said, okay, if they fight back with me on this point, I say, I check, no, this is not uh, doable. Like they don't make sense or something like that. So yeah. just a thought and like to have your guidance. Thank you. I, I love that idea. We, we, we should work on that. Like if they say this, this is what you say back. 
Um, the problem is sometimes if they say this, they, and we say something back, they claim that we're not right and it becomes a whole argument. But um, let, me, let me give it to the people who are from the Independent um, Facilitators Network. What are, when you're approached by people now who are not yet in the program, but who want to go in when it goes statewide in the summer, what, what are you telling people to do to start preparing? Yeah, the big thing is um, one of the biggest holdups with the process, Sandra's got her hand raised because I understand what Sandra's going to say. So I, I almost want, I want to give it to Sandra McKillie, uh, M M McKillie um, here in a second, because she, she's going to have some stuff to say. But just um, in terms of the, um, uh, um, you're, so there, there, there are steps to this process in the self-determination. And one of the major steps is going to be developing the certified independent budget, right? So this is the budget. It's the budget. It's how much money you have to spend and all the services and supports inside of self-determination. This consists of everything that's been used in the last 12 months plus everything that should have been used over the last 12 months, plus everything you've newly identified that should have been used over the last 12 months, new stuff, new needs. So, right, three numbers. Um, the thing is with that is that you can work on that right now without being inside of self-determination at all. And the way that you work on that is by identifying with your service coordinator or your case manager, whoever you work closely with, to um, uh, say, hey, you know what? We've been kind of chit-chatting for a year and a half about ABA services. I want those services now. Like I, I want to start pursuing those services now. Um, almost uh, the, the, the way to think about it is that any services and supports that you think that you're entitled to, and you are, um, uh, those, those are, those are what are factored into the budget that's going to allow you to pay for those services and supports that you want in the future. So instead of having that fight at the point in which you're going into self-determination over here, where you're going to say backtracked, I should have had all of this stuff back then. And I want that worked into the budget. If that's already built in to the services and supports that you have, you don't have to have that fight. So for some of you, that's maybe that's a little that's maybe a little over your head but i'm just going to say that's a very very important point um you're either going to have that conversation and that advocacy and that possible battle with them at some point in the future or you're going to have that now and if you start those conversations now that would be an enormous step in the direction towards getting at least that budget that you need in order to have that self-determination plan that you're hoping for that's one thing I, I really, um, Kavita and Kishan, I, uh, I want, I want you guys to speak, but, but I really, I really think Sandra ought to say a thing or two here. And I know that she's not the speaker, but she just, I've personally experienced the fights that she has to experience, and I just think she really ought to say a thing about this, if not to. Do you I mind know. I add some information? It's like to my ignorance, if you would say. My son is 25 right now. I have never had any service from regional center. I just bought that off that, oh, they will just say, oh, your son is doing great. Uh, you are training your son right. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I have never had any budget. So this yeah. will be really the first time I'm asking for something. Yeah, this would be a lot of details that we would have to talk to independently. I'm happy to talk to you. Any of us on the IFN are happy to have a conversation with you about what your history looks like with, is it your son, you said? Yes. Yeah, so with your son, I mean, just, um, you know, I mean, we'd have to look at the, um, we'd have to look at your son's history with, with services and whatnot. If he's a brand new regional center client, that'd be a whole other conversation, but it would really, that would come down to a lot of details, which I or any of us would be happy to answer for you. Um, Thank you. Specifically. Yeah. Um, who, who's, who was that asking that question? I'll message you. I just don't even know who it was. I'm sorry. Um, but, but I just want to add this yeah. um, is that um one, um, hopefully we will get the rollout in June. Um, everybody's yeah. working really hard for it. But the way we would suggest that you prepare for it is start attending your local advisory committee meetings. Yeah. Um, as public, encourage other 
uh, consumers like yourself, if you know other people from your community, or, you know, there's also a disparity thing that's in existence right now because of services. Many of us don't have a POSs for certain communities uh, because purely because of lack of information. So um, I would definitely, um, one, uh, advice if you can, uh, please uh, attend the local advisory committee meetings. Um, connect with your local advisory committee chair, vice chair, um, and introduce yourself, see how you can get involved, um, you know, and find out about those, um, ask them for guidance there. Uh, and uh, the uh, the interchange that they have at the DVU, that's another great way to get information. Uh, Judy Mark is a great resource. Um, IFN, if you want to attend our meetings, you're welcome to join our meetings. You don't have to be a consumer or a selectee. You could just attend the meeting as public. It's not a, a problem as a parent. Um, and, and finally, I would say um, if... Uh, you have not had any POS purely, that's, it completely resonates with what happened in my case. Um, uh, I would definitely recommend reach out to your disparity coordinator or equity of access to services coordinator at your regional center um, and mention to them that this is the pushback you're receiving and you've been trying, these are the issues. Uh, yes, regional center is always the payer of last resort, but if there are services that you have denials, but you don't have the option, the disparity of services coordinator can help you navigate this process. OCRA and the disparity of services coordinator uh, is somebody who can help you through that. Thank I you. So, yes. Adi, I just want to add to whatever Chris and uh, Kavita have said, but I think uh, like how Chris said, I would like Sandra to say something. Sandra, you want to say something you wanna, regarding this topic? Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me. Sabrina was next, so let me let Sabrina speak because she may be able to address this. Give me a second. Let me just. I just want to say something to Patty. Uh, we're just quickly okay. before we go to any questions. Patty, I just want to say one thing here. Uh, whatever Chris said and Kavita said is fine. Uh, most importantly, when uh, and whatever situation your 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 experience right now is something some of my clients actually have experienced as well. Uh, and I tell them to change the mindset a little bit. Not look at the services which are required for your son. Focus on his hopes and dreams. Uh, focus on um, what they want to do. And that's person-centered thinking. Uh, the person-centered thinking, uh, you, can, you have a lot of material to read about and think about and you know, learn about those things. The moment you realize that you need to make uh, support his hopes and dreams is when you can identify supports. And preparing yourself with that mindset definitely helps you to get into LDP going forward. So that's my two cents. Thank you. So go ahead. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Go ahead, Sabrina. Great to see yeah, you. Great to see you too. Last little bit of advice. Um, I put two links in the chat that I think are supremely helpful. If you are, you know, it, you want to know what to say when regional center says, you know, oh, well, we have to consider it or, you know, there's a, a really great sort of plain language guide on the Lanterman Act that's on the, um, uh, what is the website? It's on, it's Disability Rights California. So these, this is both from Disability Rights California. It's a, like a legal advocacy, advocacy group um, that you should also reach out to because they, they often have advocates that can help you. But the Rights Under the Lantern Act, it's like 13 chapters. You can read one or all, depending on what you're interested in. They have one in particular on the IPP that I think is fabulous. Um, it does a really good job of sort of heading off some of those things that you often hear like, um, oh, we need to get this approved or, um, you know, whatever it is that, oh, that you're a natural support. They, they sort of break down a lot of the, the things that regional center often will say and gives you sort of your rights in that case. The other is um, there's a guide, another guide from Disability Rights California um, on planning your IPP that can help you start to think through that process. Like what are my goals? Um, there are also other person-centered planning workshops and out there that might be really helpful for that. Um, but definitely check those out. I think they're a really good resource if you're kind of not sure where to go next. Wonderful. Thank you. Sandra, you are unmuted. You're next. I got nothing. <laughs> Sandra, come on. Sandra. Sandra has nothing. That's the first time in history. No, I mean, I, everybody's advice is great. I mean, I, the, what I'm advising my future clients is to get the orientation started um, and ask for the services that their child or adult has not been getting to, to start. And a lot of people say, oh, well, COVID, I don't want anyone in the house. It, hey, it took my son five months to get the assessment for ABA and get it started. So just start the process. 
you know, adults are entitled to respite services, independent living services, job coaching. There's things your your child or, or adult are entitled to that you can get started, even if you never actually use them. It just starts the basis for your budget and and self determination. Right. Oh my God. If you guys are in like the tri counties regional center or like North LA area and you don't know about Sandra, like you should give her a buzz if you want some help with this. I mean, she, she is amazing. There are a lot of people on this call right now, like Suzanne Bennett, obviously a lot of you probably know about, but I mean, um, I see Samantha here. I, I'm not going to be able to name all of you, but Sabrina just spoke a minute ago. Um, there are so many people on this call right now that are part of our IFN. So thank you, Diane Bernstein, I see. And I'm just, I'm just calling out Lourdes, oh my God, uh, Lourdes Gomez. I just, I just wanna really appreciate, there's so many people that have joined the network and have been participating. And these are just, I mean, there are many, many excellent people on this call right now. I, I feel like, oh, but there's Jan, there's Jan Opsvig. I, I'm just, I, I'm not gonna be able to, Jocelyn McNaughton is there, I, I just really, there's a lot of people here that that if if you have questions i, I don't cindy we, cox did you say cindy where, where's cindy yeah i'm cindy oh my god in 20 years of experience as an as independent facilitator diane bernstein's here we usually get um a little, yeah. elizabeth gomez is here and she's not an independent facilitator but she's a uh uh works with uh, individuals through the Integrated Community Collaborative to do person-centered planning, right. not necessarily. We all meet every month. Yeah, just so. like come and get the Q&A that you need. That's all we're saying, basically. Just get the support you need. Um, we're trying, we're trying. It, it, it's really a matter of like, it's like you're gonna leave this call today and it's like, where do I find this information? And it's like, well, I'm gonna try to put it out there on every Facebook page that's available. So I, I just encourage you to kind of tune in and. So the IFN, the Independent Facilitator Network, we meet every month for IFs. We meet every month for if you're interested in participating in self-determination and just trying to make sure that you have all the all the cues aid. That's all. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so uh, we have just a couple more minutes left of our uh, of our meeting. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to just, you know, talk about the um, people ask at every meeting about the person-centered planning funds and whether they're going to be available for people going in in June. And uh, while we have been asking DDS this question since they came up with this idea three years ago, uh, we have still don't have an answer because I don't think they've made a decision yet. You know, there is a cost factor to it. And things that cost money um, are not easily decided. And when it was decided for the first 2,500, they calculated the maximum amount of money it could ever could ever be used in. You know, it was 2,500 people using those fees. But now there's a potentially 390,000 people who could use it, which we know is not the case because we've only gotten freaking 450 people through. Although a lot more have done person-centered planning probably, I would guess, well over a thousand people have done person center planning. So, um, so that is why, that is why they have not made a decision. If you want to try to influence the process, you should be writing to DDS. You should be writing to, I'll, I'll put it in the chat, the general number, the general email for DDS for this self-determination program. Um, it's sdp at dds.ca.gov. Um, and that is the general email. It, it's usually received by a woman named um, Jennifer Parsons, who's wonderful. Jennifer may be wonderful, but she doesn't make decisions at DDS. She is not the one. So don't like be angry and say, why aren't you giving us these, these funds? Because she doesn't have that authority. Um, but what you could say, the person who does have authority over it is Nancy Barchman, the director of DDS. And so what you could say is, you know, here's an email. Could you please pass it on to, Didi, to Nancy Bargeman? And, um, and what you should be saying is, is you know, I want to go into the self-determination program in June. I want to start my person center planning now. And I want, I'm really hoping that um, we can, you know, that we can get some funding. 
Um, the other thing that, as long as I'm talking about that money, so there's a maximum of $2,500 that, that, that somebody has. And I've heard multiple stories from people who hire someone to be their independent facilitator who send a bill for the full $2,500 and they didn't get what they needed to and they have no more money left. So I'm talking to participants now. It, it's really important that, you know, it, it should not cost $2,500 to do a person-centered plan, everybody not even close. Um, I told you that I had a very experienced person doing my son's person center planning. Um, it was Sally Burton Hoyle, who's done over 30,000 of them. and <laughs> Definitely had done more than everybody on this call combined. And um, she, she charged in the hundreds of dollars. She didn't even get over a thousand folks. And so um, remember that, that you don't need to be spending all your money on that because you need to save some of your money to do things like identify good services and supports, identify and, and help negotiate the individual budget amount and create the spending plan, which takes a lot more time than you think it's gonna take. Um, for us, I was shocked because I feel like I know a lot and it still took me a good six weeks to get our spending plan completed, to get it because we it kept going back and forth because I kept getting the numbers wrong and stuff like that. So, um, so it's really, really important for you to, um, to, to just, you know, ask those questions. Some people may be willing to even be your independent facilitator for free if it's their first time they've ever done, done the work just to get experience under their belt. So, you know, try to, try to stretch that money if you can. So Judy, who, who do you, who should we talk to if we want to advocate for that money increasing in through past the, um, yeah. So it, it is Nancy Bargeman, the director of DDS who makes those decisions. Okay. Um, so if you all have, I'm not going to put her personal email address on here because the last time I did that, she got really mad at me because she gets really important emails that she has to answer. And then she was flooded with hundreds of emails about something I can't even remember. It was a long time ago. So I've learned my lesson on that one, but that SDP it's at dds.ca.gov is definitely a, an email that they accept public, um, requests from, and you can just email her. Um, I mean, it's Jennifer usually, but there's other people who answer it as well. Um, and they'll probably just respond to you saying, you know, thank you for that. But if like 500 people send this email, believe me, it go, it'll, they'll, they'll, it'll be a topic, number one topic of the next meeting they have on the self-determination program. And they have to make this decision. They can't wait till June. Yeah. I have a theory. Yeah. I have a theory that, I mean, I, well, I have, I have many reasons to, to believe that they're not going to take it away. Number one, the reason they did it in the first place was because they didn't want the, over, the, the service coordinators to be overwhelmed. Well, each regional center got between 100 and 200 people picked in the lottery. If they thought that was going to overwhelm the serv the system, wait till the summer. Mm -hmm. um, that's number one. The second reason is, um, my phone's about to die. The second, the second reason is it's all about fairness. And do we want, will the lottery selectees be, you know, favored and have more than the people who weren't in the lottery? Right. And so it just creates haves and have nots, you know, for people. Anyway, that's, that's my two cents. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, it's six o'clock um, and we lose our, our interpreter, uh, our Spanish interpreter at six. And we are committed to always having things interpreted in Spanish. So I want to thank our um, amazing, I mean, I'm so excited. I'm, I hope to come to your next meeting. So, Please. Yeah. Reach out and remind me Please. because I've got so much going on that remember everybody the vaccines are coming and we've got to figure out how to get them to people with disabilities and that is a lot harder than you think it is so um so uh we I, I just want to thank Chris I want to thank Kishan I want to thank Kavita and David um and all of the members of the independent facilitator network for joining us today you guys are amazing you are going to make or break this program I swear you are. I see, Samantha. You know? I see Samantha on my screen. I just, Samantha Husman, I just see her there too. And Samantha and everybody. All, of us here all, that just, all the great I have. They deserve to be yeah. called out. They work, they work hard yeah. and they participate. That's all I'm saying. You guys are going to make our program succeed. And we are so happy that, that you are here and supporting us. And we will not be back next week. We were taking off. We, we are now on the every other week schedule because I've just got to have 
other things going on. So we'll be back in two weeks. We have hopefully some very big news to provide you in two weeks. Um, but I cannot guarantee it because I've been hoping to tell you for last month, but I, um, we will have some big news around public policy related to um, the self-determination program and um, everybody stay safe out there. Get the vaccine if you can. Uh, we're hoping it'll come your way sooner rather than later. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.